By popular request today, we are gonna be talking about how to get your offer accepted when there are multiple offers and not necessarily by raising your offer price. And we are starting right now. Hi, I'm Jessica Janung with Active Realty and I'm a realtor here in the Temecula Marietta Valley. The first tip to getting your offer accepted in a multiple offer situation is to subscribe, like, and comment down below. <laughs> Just kidding, but I really would love it if you would. If you have been watching my latest market updates, we are currently in a very strong seller's market with a very low inventory. We have been up against multiple offers on almost every offer that we have written lately, and we've been getting many of them accepted for our clients. I am gonna share with you today some tips and strategies that I use to make my buyer's offer appeal to the seller and stand out from the crowd. Here is how the process works. My business is currently about 75% buyer clients. So most of my time is spent with buyers, showing them properties and spending time with each one, educating them on the market and the home buying process, especially my first time buyer clients. Once we found a home that they love and they're ready to make an offer on, the first thing I do is pick up the phone. I'm calling the listing agent to talk to them about the listing, the seller situation, and to find out if they have any current offers. The answer lately is yes, we have offers on the table. I then hope to get a sense of how many are on the table, are we over list price at this point, and find out if the seller is still accepting offers. Some listing agents are more forthcoming than others. If they are still accepting offers, I do prefer to come in at the end. Here is the strategy I use when up against multiple offers. Tip number one, find out what the seller wants. As I said a minute ago, I'm picking up the phone and I'm calling the listing agent. I'm gonna try to get to the bottom of what does the seller want. The seller, they want their price, the best price they can get, of course, but they also want other important things. I'm gonna ask the listing agent, how long of an escrow are they looking for? Do they wanna close ASAP or maybe they want a little bit more time and would appreciate some flexibility on the part of the buyer? Here is a scenario that we encounter fairly often. The seller is purchasing a replacement property. They've already found it, made an offer on the property, and now they just need to sell their current home. Now this replacement property that they're purchasing, it can't close for 30 days or whatever, sometimes longer. But so these sellers often ask for a 30 day close on their current home, but they then wanna do a short rent back and stay in the home while the replacement property closes, which will give them enough time to move during this rent back period. Buyer flexibility in this situation is a huge plus. Be willing to close on the seller's terms. Big tip. Tip number two, eliminate baggage, otherwise known as contingencies. On a hot property with multiple offers, buyers writing contracts that are contingent on their current property selling are not going to get a second look. They're gonna get pushed to the side. Sellers only consider contingent offers when there are no other options, and sometimes not even then. By the way, if you are considering moving to Marietta, check out the relocation guide I've created to give you lots of information about the area. The link is down below in the description and it's available for immediate download. Tip number three, don't junk up your offer. Don't ask for things that should be negotiated during the second round of negotiations, which is during the inspection period when you're likely gonna be submitting a request for repairs. Sometimes buyers know they want the seller to take care of certain things and they wanna write that into the original offer. For example, they want this pile of stuff uh, that's in the corner of the garage cleaned out that's been left or they want this hole patched in that wall, things like that. Of course, we may wanna ask for these things just later in the request for repair stage. You don't wanna come off originally as a high maintenance buyer when you're up against multiple offers. Uh, another thing that you could consider is not asking for a termite inspection in the purchase contract. You as the buyer can order the termite inspection yourself and you can pay for that and they aren't that expensive. They're about $85 and all of this can be handled during the inspection period. If needed, go ahead and ask for it, the repairs to be made um, in your request for repairs after you're already in escrow and after the inspection results have been received. Um, also, you might not want to ask for a home warranty. You could just buy one yourself if you want to sweeten the deal for the seller. 
seller paid closing costs are unlikely if you're up against multiple offers unless you're willing to raise your price even more to compensate the seller for them. You want to keep your offer as clean as possible to get your offer accepted and into escrow. Tip number four, shorten contingencies. You could waive contingencies as well, but that makes me much more nervous, so I'm not going to recommend that in most cases. Oftentimes, shortening the contingencies is an attractive option to the seller. A common shortening I see is 10 days for the inspection period versus the standard 17 days. You could do 14 days for the appraisal contingency instead of the standard 17 days and shortening the loan contingency to 17 days from 21 days if the lender is comfortable with that. For sellers, time is money and they love seeing contingency periods shortened. Nothing is worse for the seller than having the entire standard 21 day contingency period come and go, then they have the buyer cancel and they have to start the selling process all over. If you can shorten up that cancellation period, they like that. Tip number five, show that you are well qualified. Everyone knows you need to submit your loan pre-qualification letter with your offer if you are not paying cash. But nowadays, many lenders have the ability to go one step further for buyers and actually pre-approve a borrower. This might sound like exactly the same thing to most people, but a pre-approval is much stronger. A pre-approval means getting their file in front of an underwriter early on in the process to ensure that they're well qualified. Not all lenders have this capability, but a few of my lenders certainly do. So when I'm pitching my buyer's offer to the listing agent, I'm able to confidently tell them that my buyer's loan is good to go and we pretty much just need a purchase contract and an appraisal. Also, when needed, my lender will call the listing agent to affirm my buyer is well qualified to purchase the home. When a buyer is pre-approved, they have submitted all of their required documentation and the file has been reviewed by an underwriter. This goes a long way because unfortunately, there are many lenders out there that will write a pre-qualification letter without doing the proper diligence, which can be a disaster, quite frankly. Uh, when I'm listing a property, the number one thing that I'm looking for in offers is are the buyers qualified? Nothing matters in the offer if the loan won't close. The number two thing that I'm looking for is are the buyers motivated? Which brings me to my next tip. Tip number six, write a letter to the seller. In this letter, tell the seller why you love their home and hope to make it yours. Some people think this is a little cheesy, but I assure you, in a multiple offer situation, this personalized effort may just make the difference. Selling your home, it's an emotional experience for most people, and sellers ideally often want a buyer who loves their home as much as they do and appreciate all the work and improvements that they've made to it. Agents and sellers, they want to put parties into escrow that are motivated. There are often challenges that arise when purchasing a home. Issues discovered during the home inspection, various bumps in the road can definitely arise. We want parties that are reasonable and motivated and invested in a successful transaction, not that have a I could take it or leave it kind of attitude. A letter to the seller might not bridge two offers that are $10,000 apart in price, but for two very similar offers, it may just put you in the lead. Tip number seven, my final tip for today, inspire empathy. Hire a great buyer's agent that's a good negotiator and can inspire empathy. There are some agents that just email over their buyer's offers and don't give any additional information to the listing agent. I always try to give the listing agent a brief backstory about my clients and why they're hoping to win the property. Perhaps I share some difficulty that they've had getting a home that's been a challenge. Here's an example. I had first time buyer clients that were looking for a home. This was in North County, San Diego. They were in an entry level price point and therefore the market options were very limited and there was a lot of competition. We lost out on the first couple of homes that they wanted. We got outbid. Along came the third property, which they liked even better than all of the rest. I called the listing agent to see if I could show the property. She says they already have 12 offers and they're making a decision today. I ask if we can still see it. She reluctantly says, okay. We see the property and my clients really love it. I call the listing agent right after the showing and tell her that we have another offer coming. She then asked me to tell her about my clients 
And so I do. Here comes the story. Um, these clients, they were super close family friends. They're very well qualified. They just wanted to get out of their apartment and settled into their new home because they just had a brand new baby. I told her about our struggles with the other two homes that they missed out on because they got outbid and that these clients, they just wanted a house. They weren't even picky buyers in the lease. They just wanted a house. A lot of agents can really sympathize with being in a challenging market with first time buyers at an entry level price point and they may be inclined to help. We did go over asking price to get this house and their offer was selected that evening. Even though we went over asking price, the property is still appraised for 10,000 over our contract price. Just because there's multiple offers on a home and you may need to bid over asking to win the property, it does not necessarily mean that you're overpaying for the home. Oftentimes, it's just a particularly special property with above average features, or maybe it's even a little underpriced. If you have a compelling story, by all means, try and use it to win the property. These are just a few tips for getting your offer accepted in a multiple offer situation. Any tips that I missed that you can think of, let me know down in the comments below. Thanks as always for watching my video, and until next time, bye.